Hi everyone and welcome to uh, this episode of The Green Room. I'm joined by James and I'm Nick. Hi James. Hi Nick, how are you? Nice to see you today. <laughs> yeah, how are you getting on? I'm not too bad, not too bad. How's your, well, how's your weekend and your week? It's very good, it's yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty quiet one. Yes. Uh, but thoroughly enjoyed myself. A bit stormy though, stormy weather. It was stormy, it was stormy. But no, it was good. Very good weekend. What, what were you up to? Anything exciting? Yeah, no, nothing much. I was looking forward to episode 11. Were you? Yes. Why Why episode 11 in particular? Because we're, today we're talking about solid wall insulation. And is this something you know a lot about? Uh, tiny bit. You back yourself? I back myself, yeah. Well, myself, well yeah. let's see. Let's see. So we're talking about solid wall insulation generally. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there are a couple of types. Yeah, well, we're talking about... Um, uh, the walls themselves as well, aren't we? Oh, wait. We're talking a bit of cavity. To be honest, when you say you're going to do a, a podcast on walls, that doesn't sound overly riveting, does it? Yeah. However... Are we talking about cavity? Yeah, no. Just think. solid. Just okay, solid. fine. Just oh. solid. But, we, but we, I promise we're going to make this fun. Okay, fine. Well, as fun as it can be. It was right? just marginally to kind of drop the excitement level there, but that's fine, that's fine. I believe you. I'll, I'll roll with it. And, uh, so, do you, want to, do you want to start with a bit of background on solid walls and insulation? And what, what solid walls? Well, I mean, solid, solid construction uh, has been around for pff, centuries. Eons. 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 That's nice. it. Very good. Uh, for, for a few centuries, certainly... Uh, it it sort of um, you can get um, the the stone wall type, which is very traditional, uh, mm -hmm. and then to to brick brickwork, which yeah. is probably you know between 100 150 years or so. Yeah. Um, if you if your property is built with between uh, before the 1930s, sorry, yeah. uh, tongue twister. There. I was excited when you say from which date from, but yeah, before nineteen before 1930s, it's very likely that it's going to be of solid construction, one skin of brick. Um, fantastic in terms of its um, uh, solid construction, but unbelievably, uh, <laughs> unbelievably it bad. Down. Yeah, well, it doesn't go down yet. Uh, so used to, used, they used to build them sturdy and strong before, uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, in terms of the uh, insulation side mm -hmm. of it, not not too good. So it wasn't so 1930s then cavity walls started being introduced. Yeah, pretty much. It was kind of gradual adoption, and then um, uh, from from the war and onwards, as as building materials was certainly after that period was quite scarce because yeah. of the um well you know we had to sort of make various cuts and we were you know after the war there wasn't much things around so mm. um they just they were trying to find ways to, to cut corners essentially right i wouldn't say cavity wall is cutting corners but it's just they, they tried to make things like windows smaller yeah um and use using things like thermal block work rather than just brick yeah Okay. But anyway, we're talking about solid walls. So we're, so talking, we're talking about, about solid walls. So this is basically pre 1930s if you're talking about brickwork, but yeah. if you're talking about stone houses, I mean any age essentially. Yeah, and you tend to you tend to kind of um, they seem to kind of congregate um, in certain parts of the country. So I, you, you tend to see them a lot in the southwest, um, right. southwest uh, Wales in particular. Also up when you go to Harrogate, I don't know what you call that region. I know it's Yorkshire, but it's um, <laughs> the Midlands. No, Har Har no, Harrogate's up in Yorkshire, um, but I don't know if that's like North Yorkshire or if that's a particular... I don't, couldn't tell you. Something, to, something you. to do with the, um, I guess, in the close proximity to the types of materials that were easily available at the time, and then you yeah. seem to get a lot of stone houses there, so... Mm -hmm. uh, but less so, I'd say, in the um, in kind of like the Midlands and, and London, where it's red brick or, or yellow stock. And, the, and these homes, basically, I think the, it's worth mentioning. So these homes, as Nick said, they're, they're very strong. They're good. They last a long time. Yeah. yeah but they're terrible at retaining heat. Uh, so the the travel, the, well, the movement of heat from inside the property, once your heating is on to outside, is very quick. So they cool down quickly. Um, they also, uh, a lot of times, have issues with damp. Mm. Right, because it's just one skin of brick. This is why cavity walls were introduced because the yeah. water would travel through the first skin and drop away, you know, down the cavity and away from the house. With solid wall insulation, well, sorry, solid walls, you know, they they are unfortunately liable to damp traveling through them, so penetrating damp and also rising damp. Mm -hmm. um, and that's typically so the rising damp is just water coming up the bricks, uh, but they normally have a thing called DPC installed. D Damper of, damp of course, right, and that now uh, tends to be made of a well various different materials you can use. To be honest, um, but back in the day, you'd have a flint DPC. Mm -hmm. You know, these things unfortunately tend to degrade over time. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is you have a sort of in, well a water impermeable barrier. Mm -hmm. I can't really say that word very well, but anyway, to stop water being pulled up, you've got this run about three bricks or four brick uh, four bricks from the floor, and it stops water being sucked up. Um, so these things unfortunately tend to have degraded over the years 
And so you might, at the same time as, as doing what we're about to talk about, you might want to re-inject the DPC. Yep. Yep. So you get chemical injections. So you basically drill lots of holes along the DPC line and you, in, you put in this cream uh, and it gets absorbed by the brickwork and then it stops water coming Okay, up. all right. So, so that's, that's a little bit... Um a little bit about the, 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 the structure itself. Okay, so then as we move through the decades, and energy efficiency became a lot more important, yeah. certainly the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, how would you... So, so there's two camps in terms of insul insulation for solid walls, yeah. the, the external route and the internal route. Yeah, because there's no cavity, so you can't put something in the middle because mm -hmm. that cavity doesn't exist, right? So you've either got to slap insulation on the inside or slap yep. insulation on the outside. Yep. Um, two systems that, you know, they both work well. Number one, you're not limited by the width of the cavity. Mm -hmm. So you can go to town, you know. Unfortunately, internally, if you do it, then you add 300 millimetres to your inside walls, your rooms are going to become a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, if you were to do the same thing, obviously, you don't lose space internally. Mm -hmm. However, your windows will typically look very recessed within that insulation. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of, it's a, it's a bit annoying because the wall becomes thicker. Okay. Whichever way you go. All right. But internal wall insulation. Should we start with that? No, actually, I was going to go from external and then no? move in. All right. So let's let's do so let's do external and just <laughs> and just spend spend a bit of time there. So so what would you say? So in terms of when they started to be adopted in the UK, where did the systems come from and when did it, when did it start? So it's basically in uh, about 2012 ish where all the cavity walls had already been filled under government grant schemes, essentially. So they were then looking at... You know, Some of the, the easiest ones. The, the, the easiest ones. Easiest street, easy yeah. street. So uh, basically the government decided, having done what they could for cavity walls... Majority. Thought, easy to treat. <laughs> having done what they could for the cavity walls, they were like, right, what can we do now? Yeah. So they made funding available via a grant system. Yep. And this is the thing that saw a real uptake in solid wall insulation. They made a funding available. It was basically called the Green Deal Home Improvement Fund. Mm -hmm. And they gave anyone in the UK the option to get a £6,000 grant mm -hmm. towards solid wall insulation. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that grant, typically in the UK, these grants are based on uh, factors like being on particular pension credits mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. other sort of... Uh, entitlements, entitlements etc. benefit systems basically yeah um whereas this grant for the first time came out and was open to absolutely anyone mm. so the uptake was enormous yeah right so suddenly from nothing you know in this industry it suddenly went in right the private around. sector homes but what, what i'd also add add to, to what you've just said there so about 15 odd years ago there was schemes also called certain cesp i'm not going to sort of go through what the acronyms mean but essentially is, is that because you don't know uh, I just uh, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be able to kind of tell you on the top of my head. I don't know what they are. Um, so uh, I think is the, the cert is the carbon emissions reduction target. Oh, it, mate, you smashed it. Um, but anyway, the other one escapes me. But um, no, essentially, so the adoption of these systems um, through these, so that the Energy Saving Acts or the Energy Acts in the last decade, yeah. the early part of the decade, came out. And one of the mandatory things associated with that was carbon reductions you know with the uk so i us having to save carbon yeah and a good way to do it is through insulating the walls yeah and, and really good ways to do it externally or with solid wall insulation so there was there was government money particularly pumped into the, the social housing sector that took these then systems that came from europe so places like germany austria etc that they were then applied to these high-rise blocks and that, that sort of started, I think, 15, 20 years ago. And they were putting stuff like 50 mil insulation, mm -hmm. EPS systems. And then, as you said, then the story, I think, moved, moved over where the government were like, well, actually, you know, we've done something on the social housing schemes. So let's do something for the owner-occupier and the private sector landlord. Mm -hmm. So that, hence the Green Deal Home Improvement Fund coming mm -hmm. out, as you said, um, more than sort of five, six years ago. And then we saw a bit of a uptake in, in that sector as well. Yeah. But I'd say the 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 environment now for for all these schemes is 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 a bit kind of mishmashed. I.e., there's not that much money. No, I'd, I'd say there's very very little to be honest. I'd say um, you know because we get asked a huge amount, and we're, I guess we'll cover this a bit more of what these things cost. But typically, if if a job costs 
ten thousand pounds, for example, uh, in terms of funding, you're looking at about ten percent, so a thousand pounds at the moment. Mm-hmm. So you know, then you have got to put up a lot of money, your own money, up front to do yep. that to get these things installed. Um, right. So external wall insulation. Let's start there. So let's do the let's let's do the typical systems. Okay. So, so, so the build up and and some okay. of the different materials used as the insulator. Fine. So I have so I have a solid wall property. I can put on. Uh, onto the outside, and you can get any thickness of any of these products, right? But I could add uh, EPS, so expanded polystyrene. I could add rock wool, which is like a mineral wool system. Uh, I could use a wood fiber board. Uh, I could use a PIR board, like a K5, Kingspan K5. Mm-hmm. Um, I could use cork. There, there's basically there's lots of different insulation products you can use externally, and they are all specifically designed to be used externally. Right, so if I go to uh, Selco, for example, and go and buy a Celotex board, I can't strap that to the outside of my house. Yeah, you need to go and buy a specific board for external wall insulation. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing to worth worth noting. The majority of people, I think this is fair to say, are using EPS, so expanded polystyrene. Um, this is uh, it's basically when you know when you buy a TV, and it comes in that kind of white foam. It's, it's that really, but they tend to use a, a graphite enhance. So when you look at it, it's a gray color. And it's also a bit more compressed, so it, it doesn't break a bit as more much. bit more strength. As, yeah. Um, but basically, this is a really, really good insulator. Um, it's you know relatively well priced in terms of all the other insulation materials, so it's probably the best. But it's also one of the highest rates of efficiency in terms of thickness required to achieve the energy savings. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, so, we'll, so EPS so we'll, is used. So, we'll get you to, so typically, what thickness will get a solid brick one to building rigs? So, typically. you would need to. So, on an existing property, yeah, yeah you need to hit a U value of zero point three. Mm-hmm. So, the lower number, the better with U values, uh, and we will cover that. We get loads of questions on U values, yes. and it's quite a complicated thing. But basically, we're looking for a lower number, um, and so to hit a U value of zero point three with a solid wall insulation, you would need ninety millimeters of EPS mm-hmm. right so that is the standard if you are building an extension on an old property yeah you don't you need to go slightly further than that and so you need to hit a U value of 0.28 and to achieve that with EPS you're looking at 100 mil so 100 mil of insulation so you know a decent whack yeah attached to the outside of your house that will get you to that U value or you can do a combination so you can or you can put some internally externally so <clears throat> that's EPS mm-hmm. mineral wool I like that the mineral. It's my personal favourite. Okay, go on. Tell me some of the benefits of using so, mineral. So I'd say where that's beneficial to to EPS. Okay, I mean yeah, it costs costs more. So that's the flip side. Um, it's on on the acoustic side. So yeah. particularly, so in my property, uh, where I I seem to get you know on the weekends just cars going about thirty miles an hour on a should really be a ten mile an hour road. I get a lot of um, vibration. Yeah. Uh, from vans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yes, while the double glazed windows certainly help, and yeah. they are within the last five years in terms of their installation date. Mm-hmm. I know that if I if I add the the fiber, the fibers themselves would muffle a lot of that sound. Yeah. So, and in particular, with what's respect to you know some of the people's concerns about fire hazards, the that the mineral rock, rock or jewel density slab is a, is an A one class. Um, so it's non-combustible exactly yeah so if you don't lie to it nothing happens yes Um, so yeah that's why it's um, I think I mean it's a bit more more complicated to um, you just need stronger products right because it's a lot heavier than the EPS yeah and uh, not every not every applicator necessarily likes to handle it because it's itchy I I think when when you talk about mineral wool people automatically think of the stuff you shove in the loft yeah and it's you know, that stuff is quite squishy. Yep. The stuff you put in the outside of your house very much isn't. It's a very compressed board. Um, it's called a dual density board because the outer sort of 20% of it is more compressed than the than the rest of it. And But that allows it to take the renders and the base coats and things to reinforce outside. So when you tap it, it's not squishy at all, basically. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's a solid board, solid board. The other thing to mention about rock wool is it's breathable. Yes. So architects seem to love this product um, because it obviously there's complete Open breathability radar. of the system, mm-hmm. um, and so that's another plus really yeah. for rock wool. How much do you need to achieve this to the U values? Because you need a bit more than the EPS. Yeah, right? that's about sort of one one hundred one ten ish. Yeah, depends again. Yeah, what the normally when these U value people 
uh, work things out, they they take all the thicknesses from the inside to, to the actual... Oh, so like the itself. thickness of the plasterboard, exactly, the adhesive stick in the plasterboard all, to the wall. Yeah, any air gaps, etc. Yeah. Um, adjustments for thermal bridging, etc., etc. And that goes into a calculator, and then obviously then that specifies the right thickness to use. And we, we both know how to calculate these values. Yes, we do. I mean, that's one of our... Talents, I'd yes. say. I mean, Not we many. have many talents. I have many talents. You might I don't have, have less. Many, you might have less that's, talent. That's, that's, that's but you know, it's one of those things we have. We can do you values. Okay, so um, so EPS is one most people use. Yep. A good value. Um, one of the biggest things, as you mentioned when you mentioned Rockwell, is it's not Class A one. Mm -hmm. EPS isn't. So it's derived from oil. Um, so it therefore, in theory people could and, be alarmed by and, that and what i'd say is as well is if you're if you're doing um multiple dwelling properties in particular ones that are over a certain height um now you might be specified to do um a non-combustible insulation material but also if say if it's over a certain amount of stories you might have to do fire, fire breaks. breaks on the eps yeah so this is where you know for fire but just put, put people's uh, minds at rest. The the EPS, in your opinion, is a fire risk or not really? It's not really because it's certified to um, to, to a certain fire risk standard. So when you put the system together, it's like encasing the polystyrene into a in a tombstone made out of concrete. You know, so it's not going to go anywhere. So so I think it's worth saying. So the systems are based right. So what we're basing these systems on. So I have the insulation product mm -hmm. and I stick that to the wall. Mm -hmm normally with a sort of cement-based adhesive. Yep. And then I put these fixings through that, that have giant heads on them, so they're like screws with a very big head, basically. Go through the insulation board into the underlying brick yep. or block. Yeah, then I put another layer of, of the adhesive on, the cement-based adhesive, and I put a fiberglass mesh into that. Mm -hmm. That's very thin. And then I put my finish on, which can be a top coat render. It can be brick slips, which are kind of, they resemble bricks, but they're very thin and lightweight. Yeah. To get different finishes and what i was going to say is so that, that we did actually a video um probably 18 months ago that harry can can probably link to it's it's within our youtube feed where we discuss the differences between e ewi external insulation systems and, and rain screw cladding yeah so there there is a, a quite a big difference between the two systems you know but feed, feeding back into the eps point your eps is stuck on with a cement based adhesive yeah. and you're putting another layer of cement based adhesive on the top of it Yes. So there is air is not going to touch the EPS. Correct. So therefore, once it's all installed, there is real no real fire risk. There. Exactly. So that was worth mentioning. Okay, so we've got EPS and mineral wool we talked about, and then I think the other two we can kind of just just whisper. I think the PIR board, the K five Kingspan yep. K five specifically is um, it's a really good one because you need a lot less of it to achieve the same thermal values mm -hmm. as say ninety mil of EPS. So you can get away with about sixty mil worth of Kingspan K five. Um, so a lot of people use that because it's a thinner board, right? So obviously we talked about putting 100 mil of insulation on the outside of the property. Yeah. If you can, you know, just use a board that's two thirds of, of that, however, give the same kind of energy savings, then that's obviously attractive mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what else have we got? Wood fiber? Wood fiber is good, yeah. So if, if, if you're really worried about um, breathability, it's even more breathable than, than mineral Rock wool. wool. Yeah, um, it's um, it's quite good on timber timber properties. So more, I'd say, yeah, if you're if you're trying to retrofit one or if you're building a new one, it's it's quite good. Um, but it tends that the, the price compared to say EPS is, is is a lot lot higher. So you know you need to obviously factor that into your budget and whether that's the right product for you. And and we we get a lot of comments because people are obviously a bit scared by this hundred mil of insulation you know what, yeah. what the impact of that is to the outside of their house or the 90 mil depending what if they're doing an existing house or an extension i'd say that one of the you know the biggest thing that we get asked is well can i install 50 mil mm -hmm. of eps for example so you wouldn't hit building rates do you want to give yeah so uh you you have to so if you're improving a certain percentage of of the property, I believe it's twenty five percent. Twenty five percent, yeah. Of the external walls of a solid brick house, yeah. You've got to attempt, you've got to attempt to to to, to follow what the building regulations say. Yeah. I, what you've just said there in terms of the U value, you've got to try and get as close as possible to zero point three. Yeah. If that's achievable. Yeah. Um, the other interesting question I just I had it earlier today, and I was um, debating with uh, with a journalist. I uh, can't say which uh, national newspaper, but anyway, um, and they were all about, you know, t taking 
you know, um, not as attractive pebble dash. It could be someone's look, not personally mine. Uh, taking that off on a solid brick house and and, and um, repointing the brick, mm -hmm. etc. And you know, my, my argument was obviously, well, if you're taking the existing render off a solid brick house again building regulations may apply. Mm -hmm. I think they certainly do if you kind of read them. If you take more than 25% off, mm -hmm. again, you've got to attempt or show that you're attempting to reach minimum regulation standards on those walls. Yeah. So you've got to improve the thermal um, envelope of those walls. So very dangerous if it's render. So the best thing is if you've got um, existing render and if it is stable um, and you're looking to kind of re-render the property, uh, it's, it's a good, good idea to think about insulation at that point because not only will that refresh the existing mm -hmm. render, it will also um, improve the thermal efficiency of the walls. Yeah. So. And also, what I was going to say is, because if you're um, refurbishing your, your property, because external insulation, like other measures, like heating controls and solar panels, are an energy efficiency measure, the, the VAT that's paid to the to final customer is only 5%. Okay, so, 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 that's, that's can... a good, so let's go on to that now then. So if I were to get um, a solid wall, so I've got a house, I don't know, yep. so it's you know, a mid-terrace house, for example, right? So that's approximately on the front, I guess you've got five metres wide by yeah. five and a half metres yeah. high. Let's try and keep things easy. So 30 square metres, yes. about 30 square metres. And yeah. 30 at the back. 30 at the back. So I've got 60 square metres. What kind of cost am I going to pay? External depending upon special. the region of the country yeah it may vary anywhere between four and a half to six and a half thousand pounds okay but can you do a meter square price for me there yeah potentially so i'd say between 75 to 110 yeah pounds a meter yeah and, and as you were saying if it's external wall insulation so if you're adding the insulation the vat there is five percent yes if your installer is vat approved right yes if it's vat registered if vat registered not approved so, so if you're thinking just of re-rendering and you're, you're going to pay 20% VAT, yeah. what you might find is that the differential, if you actually do insulation as well, is not as big, but actually you're getting all those benefits. Of and then the benefits really are the energy savings, yes. right? So the thermal comfort. So I need, because the movement of heat for, or the transfer of heat from the inside of my house to the outside is so much slower yeah. because of the presence of this insulation. I need my heating on less, and so I get my energy savings. Yeah, but also I'd say if you're um, if you're in the private sector, if private rental PR, PRS, private rental sector of the market, um, now the minimum energy efficiency standards qualify. Yeah. Or, or, or they're live, or they were live since April two thousand eighteen. So therefore, I have to, you know, if I'm a landlord and I'm letting this property out, I've got to hit a certain minimum yeah. energy efficiency score. And actually, external wall insulation is a great way to. So if you do it now. And if those standards rise over time, which the government are mm -hmm. absolutely talking about, and Harry, you'll probably know when they're raising it up to C or not, not, but certainly muting those those discussions, aren't they? Uh, yes, they are. They're um, yeah, they, they keep changing when they're going to do it. Keep pushing it back as they pretty much always do. Okay, but there, but there will be a, a, it, a exactly time. You know, over time those standards will rise. So yeah. If you do it now, obviously not only is it good for your tenant because the energy bills are lower, but actually mm -hmm. you can be you can rest assured that. You'll be able see to the standards and then you won't have to do exactly. Okay, okay. So the cost is, I mean, it is an expensive thing, and I think the, I think that's what people are going to maybe struggle to get their heads around. That you know, if if I could get cavity wall for free, cavity wall insulation for yeah. free, and I'm having to suddenly pay a hundred pounds a square meter, you know, that is a huge investment, I guess. I think the the thing to mention number one is that the cavity wall insulation you're defined by the thickness of the cavity. Yeah. So I can put as much insulation on the outside of my house as I want. So the energy savings potentially are therefore much bigger. You know, if I have a cavity of fifty five mil, and I then put fifty five mil of insulation in it, if I on my outside of my house if I put ninety mil, mm -hmm. then I can obviously get bigger energy savings. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. But also number two. You know, if I've got a rendered property or I have a Pebble Dash property and I decide to install something like this and it has a new render finish on it, there's a potential increase in the value of your property. Um, and where we are in London... If you're outside of London, I'd say, because that's what the studies show. In London, it, the, the biggest... The things that... Uh, the, um, I would say, function of uh, price, it's proximity to, to underground station and proximity to a good school. It's quite funny. But every other region, it's what you just said, apart yeah. from London. It's quite a weird... 
So, but I but that's London. that's a really Sorry, good Londoners. that's a really good um, reason to, to do it, it right? Yeah. That is a good reason to do it because you you know you've got a house and suddenly someone is willing to pay more for. But but for house. me, it's, it's if I was turning up to one that's really drab and ugly on the outside, it, yeah. I already have pre kind of determined views about what the inside is going to look like. Yeah, so true. if the outside is nice and tidy and neat. Yeah. I'm going to have a lot better feeling yeah. before I walk through a front yeah, door. Yeah, no, great. And, and I think the other the other bits and pieces, you know, if I have uh, an old solid wall property and it's brick um, and the pointing is really bad, mm. and I know you talked about pointing earlier, I had a tiny bit of wall Incredibly repointed. Incredibly expensive, though. Oh, God. It is really expensive to repoint a wall, and it is painfully slow. Mm. You know, you're talking like they might do three metres a day. And, and three square meters. Do you have to do it often as well? Do you have to do it? Every... No, you don't. You don't. But on old houses, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where a tradesman come and they will tell you you need to do a certain amount of upkeep. So if you get windows installed, yeah. wooden windows, you're told to paint them every ten years, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone knows, not everyone, but most people, the paint the guy will leave who install the windows and they will never be painted until that house is sold. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing with this, you know, the people who bought houses and they're very, very old. Mm. They potentially there's never ever had repointed done on their house, yep. and you start getting damp issues, you know, because we talked about this mm. water traveling through a solid wall, you can get issues. So instead of repointing, you know, you could protect the outside of the house, get the energy savings by doing something like external wall insulation, mm-hmm. and you, you know, you, you benefit from there. Okay, wouldn't you, you, wouldn't you lose the nice brickwork? You, you would, unless so. Number one, potentially, yes, it depends on the finish because I can get a render finish, but number two. I can replicate bricks with a brick slip finish. Um, and so they resemble yep. bricks uh, and it's a lightweight system. So listed properties, you probably can't do it. And I'd say conservation areas, you need a- approval from your local council. And, and I, th- I think, to be honest, to be on the safe side anyway, is always to, to just check get that. in touch yep. with your planning office because, yep. you know, it's not like replacing a boiler, for example, Correct. where... If I've got no heating, I'm going to replace the boiler. Mm-hmm. They they can kick up a fuss. Um, and they tend to. You know, they, they will kick up a fuss. So if you just check and make sure they're happy with it, get signed off, then you've got no issues. Right. Listen, I'm going to be a devil's advocate with you. Okay. So I'm very interested in this measure. Right. Tell me more, Nicholas. Can I rock up to my Argos and just order off the castle and get it installed? How do I... Right. What did people? Can I install it? Do you so, need training or what's, so what's going on? You talked about systems earlier. So, um, you know, rain screen cladding, I think you touched yeah. on cladding generally. So typically, with its solid wall insulation on the internal property, it is sold as a system, hmm. right? So you need the adhesive to stick the insulation board on. You need the insulation board. You then need the mechanical fixings that go through it. You then need the mesh that sinks in another layer of the adhesive. Mm-hmm. You need a primer and you need your finish, which is either a render or a brick slip or whatever it is. You buy the system as a series of, of items, but they are used together mm-hmm. to get the finish. Mm-hmm. You know, So I would always suggest buying those systems from one store. Yeah. Do I need an architect? You don't need, need an architect. You can get one, yeah. obviously. More and more architects are becoming familiar with it. Mm-hmm. We're beginning to do CPD with a lot of architects and yeah. trying to teach them about external wall insulation because more and more people are asking about it. Um, and if you are an architect looking for some CPD, we can deliver that for you. Um, but it's, uh, I, I would say, I would always recommend going to an expert. Now, I can go into a shop and go and buy a render. I'm going to sell and buy a bucket of render. And do we give some uh, system uh, specifiers a shout out? Who are some of the system specifiers out there? Uh, there, there are lots. Um, so you know, the, the one that everyone will have heard of, or potentially not everyone, but many people will have heard of, is Krend. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, Jub. Jub. EWI Pro. Yeah. Uh, Weber. Yeah. Stowe. Stowe. Yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty of systems out there that yeah. do this. Um, and I, you know, we, I know for a fact people are going and they buy insulation from one supplier and they buy fixings from another and they buy yeah. adhesive from another. I'd really recommend buying the whole system from one supplier only yeah. because they are designed to work together, yeah, in harmony with one another to, to provide the, the benefits of it. So have a look. In terms of installers, mm-hmm. um, uh, everyone thinks, assumes that a plaster will be able to get a really nice finish on its stuff. So wall yeah. insulation and a render. Make sure they have some training. Yeah, so make sure your installer is carded with a system, mm-hmm. whatever system that is. 
Ask them um, some examples of jobs yeah, done. Yeah, go and see some houses. Because the worst thing, you know, you're, you're changing the the outside of your house. It is the most visible thing. It's not like I'm doing a little cupboard in a bedroom. Hmm. The outside of my house is potentially going to change completely. And what if I'm replacing windows? So... Get the windows done after, or...? I would always, 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 always try and change the windows before you do the insulation yep. system. So when we're talking about insulation, the external wall insulation systems, we're we typically we're going with Thinko render systems, yeah. Um, I would therefore, you know, basically if you take windows out, you can damage the system mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're going to do it, change the windows first, get the windows in nicely, make sure when they do that, you get the sill extended at the same time. Because obviously I've got thick now the, system, the yeah. wall is now suddenly quite thick, yeah. and my old sill, you know, wouldn't reach the end of the insulation so if you get them to extend the sills to house this extra thickness basically planning planning nicer. planning planning is, is the yeah key. i think so i think that's it and that's it's always the way right if you if you look at it you take some time on it it's it's definitely the way to go um so uh and there there are qualifications installers can get but if you're looking for a carded installer um and you're looking for warranties you know typically it's, it's and, worth considering and is there is there is there a <clears throat> best time of the year to to do it in your opinion or does it not uh, much? well you will feel the most benefit obviously if you're doing this job in september october mm -hmm. right if you are doing it uh it, in christmas the days are shorter this is outside work you're doing it yeah. outside your property installers won't love doing it in minus five yeah they will prefer doing the works in spring through mm -hmm. summer and, and the autumn so winter is unlikely to happen, although that's definitely when you'll feel the most benefit. There are always, with these systems, various components that are designed specifically to work in different types of weather. You know, so there's adhesives that set at colder temperatures, there's accelerators that help renders go off quicker and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of render finishes, you know, the, the colours that you can get with a thin coat silicon render system are essentially endless. My favourite is platinum. You can get platinum, you can get whatever colour you want. And so if you've got a RAL colour, an NCS colour, yeah. you know, or speak to the manufacturer themselves, they will have any colour under the So I would just like to add one thing before we move on to internal, just conscious of time. I'm, so I'm, should we do internal next week? Because we're, we're already at the half hour mark. Um, well, maybe we can um, lump internal with other measures because I think we've got conservatories and cavities so it might be a bit too many so so let's see okay right carry on so what was your point um, well, my point is um, uh, about uh, and we were talking about this on episode one I think I think was episode one about solar PV Harry I believe it was Good, good memory there. See, I, I, I watched, I I watched the podcast. I honestly can't remember what episode Listen, was listen, about. listen, James. I, I watched not only while I watch them on YouTube. I listen to them on Stitcher. Do you? I've, I've even got an iPad specifically so I can so, so 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 listen to it podcast. again, and, and I, and I watch it on uh, Spotify. Good. So I, I watch it time and time again. I wasn't but anyway, why our subscriber numbers were going up? It's just you. Five it's times. just me, yeah, and uh, <laughs> my extended family. No, um, I was going to say. So in, in that piece, we said, oh look, you know, solar PV and all the tariffs were going down over time so therefore doing solar PV as a standalone job might mm -hmm. not make that much sense Yeah. but then suddenly if you're doing windows and external wall insulation you can link all of these measures together so yeah. it's better to do it all at once when you've got the scaffolding up yeah no agreed agreed but, 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 but scaffolding right and so this is something that people get wrong a lot so they put scaffolding up and then they think okay I can get my windows done and all this sort of stuff mm -hmm. the scaffolding needs to be away from the walls a sufficient distance yep. to be able to squeeze the insulation in Right, and mm -hmm. when you're putting render and things on between different lifts on scaffolding, you need to kind of be aware of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so people will put scaffolding too close to the house, and they won't be able to work. Yeah, <clears throat> so just just be aware of that. You need to put the scaffolding far enough away from the actual house to allow it to house the insulation. Okay, <clears throat> um, and I was going to say so. So so also the good thing about um, external is um, it's it's good time to give other external bits of your property a facelift so your downpipes your face and gutters yeah yeah of course it is i mean as you said the scaffolding's there the guys are right by these things so if you've got a very heavy you know cast iron downpipe for example you might want to replace that at this time with a new downpipe yep. a new plastic downpipe plastic guttering and get all the gutters cleared new fascia boards a lot of this stuff again you know people don't do on their properties and then they start beginning to fall into disrepair a little bit mm -hmm. and it's something that if you're doing it it's not going to add a huge amount to the incremental costs 
mm-hmm. to get this all sorted. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, I'm thinking about actually, so my house, doing a bit more stuff in the kitchen, so extending it to like a kitchen diner. And then right. basically at the back, I will use mineral wool and then just do the whole thing with external wool insulation. Okay. So the kitchen, the extended bit would build with block work, <clears throat> yeah, and then the rest of it would be. Well, that's and you know that's another thing for builders. And in terms of the um, in terms of building extensions, you no longer need to build cavity walls. Yeah. So you've got to with a cavity wall, you've got to build two dead straight walls, put the insulation between, and, and get a finish on it. With uh, if you were to use external wall insulation when you're building your extension, mm-hmm. you can get a thermalite block, which is just a like an old breeze block. Yep. Put on its side and strap 100 mil of insulation to the outside, you know, with the adhesive and then the mechanical fixings. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. You've achieved yep. all you need to in terms of thermal efficiency. It's got the required strength, etc., etc. It's a very, very cheap way to build an extension, but really effective in terms of heat loss. So I was just going to say about that VAT point. So if, <clears> if you're doing external wall insulation and you're doing ancillary works related to the measure, so i.e. faces and gutters, mm-hmm. etc., um, you can lump all of that into your 5%. 5%. Okay. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good... And I think one, one other thing worth mentioning. So we have come across systems that are only... They're a dry-fix system, so they only yeah. use mechanical fixings to anchor the insulation board to the wall. So um, I'd say it's more safe, although it's approved, it's more safer to use a belt and braces system, one that's wet-fixed, yeah. and additionally enforced, reinforced with fixings. I'd yeah. say it's a better way and to... And final point, brick slips. So yeah. before we move off external wall insulation, because I know we have some other things to cover in this podcast... Yep. So um, if, if you've got uh, pebble dash property, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily need to remove all the pebble dash. Mm-hmm. But if you remove the blown pebble dash, you can then use the insulation yeah, mm-hmm. and stick it straight onto the pebble dash. Yep. And the mechanical fixing is then going to anchor that insulation to the wall because it goes through the insulation, through the pebble dash, into the block work or bricks underneath. Yep. That's going to hold it in place. And so what you're doing is taking a kind of rundown pebble dash property that looks relatively dated Mm -hmm. and adding the insulation on the outside, you suddenly have brought your house, number one, up to kind of modern efficiency levels, i.e. it's not freezing in the wintertime, Mm -hmm. but also it's got a great new look. So it's quite a nice way of improving your property. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd say um, it... um as you said, you know, it aesthetically does look good. And if you choose the right color and, you know, if the, you know, installer really takes pride in their craftsmanship, actually it, it looks really, yeah, it does. really good great. and nice and neat when it's done. And, um, yeah, you can do stuff like, um, so below, above your DPC, normally the system starts at the level of your DPC and above. But also, you know, if you're wanting to like render below it or even insulate below your DPC, that there are ways to do it. So actually the whole envelope of your Looks really smart. walls is nice and insulated at the yeah, same time. Nice. So right. Is that external wall insulation done? It's external wall insulation. I think we've run out of time for Did internal. Did you think we could speak for 35 minutes about external wall insulation? I thought we could talk for hours, James. Did you? That, um, I what I was going to say is, so, so it's, worth, um, it's worth saying that uh, although we were going to cover internal wall insulation, it will be covered on a, on a future podcast, potentially next week one. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But we do have time just for a few minutes just to briefly kind of discuss anything that came out of the spring announcement by the Chancellor. Which was... So this is all about boilers and banning boilers. Yeah, it is. And I think it, it, um, it, it, the, the theme, so this is in the BBC, um, I've just got up. So um, although Harry did sort of point, point out to me earlier, uh, the, the theme is about um, the combustion engine. So whether that's a boiler, whether it's a car mm-hmm. and the type of, hydrocarbon fuel that you use so they are looking at ways to to reduce hydrocarbon <clears throat> combustion you know type gadgets whether it's boilers etc yeah um and by 2025 they want to move so new builds that are happening from that date yeah they obviously want to use alternatives so i.e heat pumps right um or, or, or other means that are not like gas boilers essentially and what do you think about that i think um i think i gave an opinion on this on episode seven um but you might have to double check that. I just told you, you know, I do, I do, uh, very good. I'm very proud I, I, of you. I'm I do proud follow you. these things, uh, James, very carefully. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I know what your argument was there, but my argument was, I do think you remember what my argument was? You were against it because you thought the, the price of gas is so low and it's such a cost effective fuel that why change something that's not broken? Well, no, my, my thing was, can I just go back to episode seven and what my point was? Yeah. Right. So if, if I'm getting, so I get an air source heat pump, Could right? Be six. Whatever it was. So I have an air source heat pump. Yeah. It runs on electricity, mm. right? 
which is in theory great. But how do I make that electricity I argue in the for first place? Source. I thought ground source. Ground source is different yeah. again. But how do you make the electricity to run your air source heat pump? If you don't have solar PV, it takes an electri- electrical charge and it takes the latent heat in your garden. No, no, no. no I know that. Yeah. yeah, but it requires electricity to run. Yes. How is that electricity created? It can, in theory, be from a gas power plant or a coal fired power station, which is like two miles. From yeah, but yeah. but on the whole, I know you know, thirty five percent of our power comes from gas power plants. So he, granted, we can definitely move to electricity for everything, mm-hmm. but that means we're going to need to burn more gas to make the electricity to run it. Yeah, that's my argument, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, we got wind turbines, we got solar PV, but solar PV doesn't really produce a lot of electricity in the in the winter months yep. when you need your heating. So the only real thing then is wind turbines. Mm-hmm. Wind turbines are fantastic. They're great. People don't love them who live near them. Yeah, and yes, we're going to put more out to sea, and that's fantastic. It's relatively expensive still. It's definitely coming down in price. Mm-hmm. But we are always going to have, because the wind doesn't blow all the time, mm-hmm. a huge amount of electricity that we have has to come from gas. Mm-hmm. Therefore, gas is going to be part of what we use. Put it in a boiler because it's cheaper. Right than using the gas to make electricity. So we're, we're hoping we're hoping by twenty twenty five, you know, we'll have a few more nuclear power stations that come online. In theory, more carbon neutral or carbon reduction fuels or renewables. At that so point and this is we're we're now going over big time in terms of time wise, but nuclear power plants coming online before two thousand twenty five. Uh, Hinkley Point C, isn't it? Twenty twenty five. Will not be twenty twenty five. EDF have come out and said it won't be twenty twenty five. Oh dear. And we're losing most of our nuclear generating capacity. Mm -hmm. So this is absolute rubbish, right? If the government pulled their finger out of their bottoms, Mm -hmm. although they might be a little bit busy with uh, Brexit at the moment, but eventually they won't be, I assume. And so they need to do something. Yeah. Anyway, rant over. So I was just going to say, so, um, and we can can argue this uh, until the cars come home. But anyway, maybe in episode 12. I'm going to sound like um, it's Sky Sports News, but... uh, uh, Brilliant Energy have become the tenth supplier to have collapsed in the last year. So not brilliant. So it's like football managers, you know, yeah. um, resigning or yeah. getting fired. So it's not that good, is it? No, no. Excuse the pun, but uh, yeah, it's just it just just shows you, yeah, with all of the how do you say um, government's view towards opening up the market to to new retailers it's not in the energy market. To work, is it? At the see, the lowest is not the best, James. You know, it's all about. Safe supply and providing a um, a good customer service. But those people aren't cut off, are they? No, they're not, because as we discussed in the previous episode, yeah. Do you know what episode that was? I, I don't know. Was it episode two? <laughs> I don't know. Was it episode two or three? <laughs> I don't know. Was it four? Anyway. Oh dear. But anyway, so uh, and then standard standard uh, the price cap was yeah. Uh, no, it's not the April the first, was it? When's it's gone that? up. It's going uh, yeah, up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So so they um, like. Like immediately after they put in the standard price cap, they pretty much, I think it was two months later, raised it. Um, so, so it's now, working well. But it's. Yeah, but, yeah, so good. now. Um, but the new one's from April 1st, isn't it? So they've put it, they've announced it, and then it. Yeah. I feel like we should be in charge of energy policy. Yeah. Anyway, maybe, maybe a different tool. But so now all the energy companies are raising their prices, uh, British Gas and everyone, they're raising their prices I to, to match the price cap. Just not sure. Anyway, listen, so we're almost three quarters of an hour. So just important to say, uh, to thank everyone for, for watching this episode. And where can they listen to it? Let's go again. Uh, so you can find us obviously on YouTube. Uh, to download our podcast, the easiest way is to go on to the Green Age website. And if you go up uh, to, to the top bar, uh, you'll see uh, the, the, the clickable podcast link where that will open up another page. And on there, you'll have a full uh, list of uh, areas where you can find us. So Apple, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Stitcher um, I think TuneIn Radio, all, all these great places. Radio? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, we are. Yeah. It's not on there. We need to uh, <coughs> just mention that. But, but no, anyway. it's good. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers.